Hey friends, think about this for a moment. Imagine having a glass that's halfway filled with sugar. Now, try to picture yourself eating all of that sugar in one go. It sounds pretty tough, doesn't it? But guess what? In a 600 milliliters bottle of Mirinda, there's actually that much sugar inside a whopping 82.8 grams to be precise. Soft drinks have become incredibly common in our lives. It doesn't matter where you are, whether it's a city or even a different country, you'll always find a bottle of Coca-Cola. Did you know that there are only two countries left where Coca-Cola isn't available? They are North Korea and Cuba. In almost every corner of the world, whether it's in cinema halls, at cricket matches, in college canteens, or during wedding celebrations, you'll spot people savoring soft drinks. According to Coca-Cola's official website, an astonishing 1.9 billion servings of Coca-Cola are sold every day, a number that's genuinely mind-boggling. And remember, that's just one type of drink. If you consider all the various soft drinks available, the total quantity consumed globally is simply beyond imagination. That's why, in today's video, let me surprise you by revealing the ingredients found in these beverages. Once you're aware of them, share this knowledge with your friends and family so they can also grasp what they're consuming. To begin the video, let's clear up some common misunderstandings. One of the most widespread myths about soft drinks is that they're sometimes referred to as toilet cleaner by critics. But can we really compare Pepsi and Coca-Cola to toilet cleaners? The straightforward answer is no. People make this comparison because both toilet cleaners and cold drinks contain some types of acids. In cold drinks, these acids are citric and phosphoric acids. Citric acid is a natural substance and can be found in fruits like lemons and oranges. On the other hand, phosphoric acid is a common food grade additive labeled as Z338. When a product has a high sugar content, mold and bacteria can easily grow there. Phosphoric acid is used to prevent the growth of these harmful microorganisms. You'll encounter phosphoric acid not only in soft drinks but also in various other products such as jams, processed meats, cereal bars, bottled coffee beverages, baking powder, protein drinks, and even certain types of cheeses. Interestingly, these two acids are also present in some toilet cleaners. Frequently, when making homemade toilet cleaners, people mix lemon juice with vinegar and baking soda. However, comparing soft drinks and toilet cleaners wouldn't be accurate. If you recall your chemistry lessons from school, you'd remember that there are mild acids, like the dilute ones, and there are concentrated acids, which are much stronger. Without going into too many details, it's important to note that phosphoric acid, found in soft drinks, is a weak acid, while toilet cleaners contain much stronger chemicals, such as sodium hypochlorite and hydrochloric acid. These are used to clean strong stains. And interestingly, hydrochloric acid is also present in our stomachs, where it plays a crucial role in gastric acid. Now, it wouldn't make sense to compare our stomachs to toilet cleaners. Right? Well, Chemistry is complicated, and making conclusions just from one common ingredient can give you the wrong idea. Another misconception is that the pH level of a soft drink is equivalent to that of a toilet cleaner. As you may recall from your school days, pH level measures acidity, indicating how acidic a substance is. Soft drinks typically have a pH level around 2.5, but consider this. The pH level of lemon juice falls between 2.0 and 2.6. Pomegranates have a pH level of about 2.9, and grapes are in a similar range. So, if you are wondering whether it's okay to consume soft drinks, the answer is quite straightforward, no. Before we talk about why soft drinks can be harmful for you, let's answer a question you might have. Why did I defend soft drinks by correcting some misconceptions about them if I'm going to talk about their dangers? Well, the simple reason is that misinformation which means wrong or false information, can be harmful. Whether the final conclusion about soft drinks is good or bad, it's important not to use wrong information to make that decision. Now, let's understand why soft drinks can be harmful. Take the bottle and flip it over to look at the list of ingredients. In the video, we're using Merinda as an example, which is a brand owned by PepsiCo. 
but you can also apply this to a similar brand owned by Coca-Cola, like Fanta. These two companies, PepsiCo and Coca-Cola, are the biggest in the business. Mirinda and Fanta are rivals, meaning they compete with each other in the market. Now, let's examine how many calories are in these drinks. The label states that 100 milliliters has 55 calories. So, in a 600 milliliters bottle, you can calculate the calories like this. So put it simply, drinking a whole bottle of this beverage gives you as many calories as eating a McDonald's medium fries, 320 calories, three servings of kids fries, 110 calories each, totaling 330 calories, or almost as many as a cheeseburger from McDonald's, around 300 calories. You might not think it's a big deal, but here's the point. When you eat foods like a cheeseburger or McDonald's fries, they become your meal, and you feel full after having them. But if you drink a bottle of Coca-Cola or Mirinda, will it satisfy your hunger? No, it won't. These drinks give you extra calories that don't do much for your body. You'll still need to eat a proper meal like lunch or dinner after drinking them. Regular meals provide you with important stuff like protein, sodium, potassium, vitamins, fibers, and fats. They give your body many nutrients it needs to stay healthy. But what do you get from that bottle of soda? Just empty calories, which means they don't give your body any useful nutrients. There's a lot of sugar in this drink, like a really, really high amount that might surprise you. To put it in perspective, if you take the same amount of sugar and put it in an empty glass, there would be about 13.8 grams of sugar in 100 milliliters of this drink called Merinda. Now, in the whole bottle, which is six times that amount, you'd have a whopping 82.8 grams of sugar. This much sugar can make you truly sick. You might wonder, what's a normal amount of added sugar for people to consume? Well, the answer is actually zero, absolute zero, because we're talking about added sugar here, not the natural sugars you find in foods. Those natural sugars are okay in moderation. Milk contains a natural sugar called lactose, and fruits have another natural sugar known as fructose. When you consume milk or eat fruits, you are getting these natural sugars, which provide your body with the energy it needs. These natural sugars fulfill your body's requirements completely. On the other hand, added sugars are the sugars we intentionally add to our food, like the extra sugar we put in while cooking or preparing meals. According to the American Heart Association, our bodies don't actually need any added sugar to function properly. So, the ideal amount of added sugar our bodies require is zero. But you might wonder, what's the safe limit for added sugar consumption? Well, for adults, the recommended limit is 36 grams of added sugar per day for men and 25 grams for women. Just by drinking one of these bottles, you'll go way beyond your recommended daily sugar intake. That's why I'm emphasizing that regularly consuming such a large amount of added sugar each day can have severe consequences for your health. The negative effects won't happen immediately. If you do this for a day or two, there might not be significant consequences. However, if you continue this pattern daily for many years, you could experience various health issues only because of this excess added sugar.